Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining the second day of the of CPR's annual meeting for 2022. Uh, my name is Bruce Bird. Uh, I'm uh, on the board of CPR and I'm a co-chair with my friend Cindy Randall of the annual meeting committee. Um, this is uh, just to kick us off for the day. This is not a formal formal presentation, uh, really just trying to get us uh, ready to go. Uh, I, I will just take a few minutes uh, to talk a little bit about CPR, and then I'm going to turn it over to Cindy. And uh, we're both going to try to give you a little quick perspective on why we participate, why we are, are part of this organization, why we're committed to, to its mission. Um, there are a num number of reasons why we would have an annual meeting like this. Um, the, perhaps the most obvious is because it gives us an opportunity to inform um, so the, the dispute resolution ecosystem to engage with that ecosystem um, and you know present as much uh, timely information as possible that that the that you as participants can benefit from. That's that's sort of the obvious reason. Another pretty obvious reason uh, that I think is perhaps just as important is to uh, give you an opportunity to understand who we are as an organization in case you're not that familiar with us. Um, and Alan, I thought, did a fantastic job yesterday going through really what is just a, a slice of the many initiatives that CPR has underway. I will not, I will not repeat that, nor could I do it justice. But I did want to just give you briefly my take as a, just a single individual why I commit my time to this organization. Um, the, the main reason I do is because CPR, in my opinion, is bringing to the world of dispute resolution a, an approach that is unmatched, that is truly unique. Um, how, why is that? Certainly, CPR seeks to be a thought leader in the realm of dispute resolution, but it's easy to say that you have to earn that. And there are a number of ways that CPR earns that. Number one, CPR focuses on hard data. We don't make things up. We don't operate on hunches. We look at data in the realm of anything that touches the world of dispute resolution to understand trends, uh, where there are holes in the approach, where there are opportunities to provide solutions. Two, we follow that up with deep analysis. Again, Alan walked you through yesterday a variety of the initiatives that we have underway. And the reason we spend time during the course of the year raising a little bit of money to run the organization is because we are running initiatives that are inclusive, that are, uh, that are scientific to drive new solutions in the realm of dispute resolution. It's not just about uh, specific cases or, spe or specific the resolution of specific instances. Speaking of inclusion, we take an inclusive approach. We are not insular. We don't meet as a group of people involved in CPR and ask each other what we think the right answer is to a problem. We widen our aperture. That's why we form partnerships with other organizations such as IILP, uh, organization we worked with as part of this annual meeting so that we are not missing out on voices that are outside of our organization. Um, uh, Another area in which we are unique is that we do not just focus on what you might view as traditional dispute resolution, i.e. alternative ways of resolving a matter that otherwise would be resolved in courts. That is really important to who we are, and we provide an incredible world-class platform to do that. But there's more to dispute resolution than just that. And we try to, you know, Think about any way in which dispute resolution, writ large, can, can drive to a, a more fair society. So hearkening back to last night's presentation about uh, Professor Ang's work, work on the birth uh, analysis of the film Birth of a Nation, uh, you cannot understand how uh, disputes, conflict, and the need for conflict resolution is essential to creating a more fair and just society 
without understanding where we come from, the challenges we face, where we have our own prejudices and failings. And so just exploring that topic, even though it doesn't relate to a specific dispute on a specific topic, is core to who we are because it's all part of a journey of understanding and learning so that we can be better at creating a better society. Um, and then finally, I'll just say that having been on the board for about 18 months, I, it has been extremely rewarding to me in, in, in large part uh, because it's a very welcoming organization. Uh, I have been able to contribute instantly, even though I'm not a long time uh, member of the board. And that's because uh, what CPR is interested in is good ideas, engagement. And so you don't have to be on the board. You don't have to be, you know, you don't have to commit tons and tons of money, although we do appreciate that. Uh, we are open to your contributions and your engagement, however that might work to you. There's plenty of work to be done. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Bruce. That's a, just a great overview of the organization. Um, so hi, everyone. I'm Cindy Randall. I'm Associate General Counsel at Microsoft and Bruce's co-chair. Thank you all so much for participating. I am really excited about our program, and I think it's already off to a great start. Our theme is, is just so relevant right now, and, and we've all experienced how technology can solve problems but also create them, can um, help resolve disputes, but also create new ones. And I really appreciate the innovation and thought leadership of all of our speakers in grappling with these issues at the intersection of technology and dispute resolution. It's just such an interesting topic. And even though I hear from Hossein all the time in my, in my, uh, at the office, right, I really enjoyed hearing from him um, because that's the first time I've heard him address an external audience to, to take both a personal and a global perspective on technology and the law. So that was fascinating to me. Also, I thought a really broad perspective to kick off our meeting. And I really enjoyed the general counsel roundtable on the use of data in dispute prevention, a very exciting topic. And of course, um, Professor Eng's presentation really um, uh, incredibly important and powerful. So hope you all are enjoying the conference so far. Um, I am relatively new to CPR, uh, newer than Bruce, and I'm serving on the newly formed technology committee. So planning this meeting has really been a deep dive into CPR's work and mission. And the more I learn about it, the more I appreciate the importance of, of having an organization that um, is dedicated to thought leadership around this um, with, with the broad lens that Bruce described. Because, um, you know, I've been a litigator for 28 years, a long time. 20 of those have been in-house in three different industries across the whole spectrum of general litigation from commercial to employment, to class actions, to international arbitrations. And in all that time, I can count on one hand the number of cases that actually went to trial or to an arbitration hearing. So it's pretty clear that I'm actually in the dispute resolution business and ideally in the dispute prevention business as well. So I'm very drawn to this organization because it's addressing those goals in a very innovative and forward thinking way. And I've really seen that in action in working on this meeting. So also wanna thank all of our sponsors. Your support is so essential. I really appreciate your responding to that outreach from Bruce and me and for participating in our panel discussions and for nominating Rising Stars, all really important and energizing contributions to the success of this meeting and to CPR's mission. So please enjoy the program today and tomorrow. Take the time to participate in opportunities to virtually socialize. I know after two years, we're all a little tired of virtual socializing, but I am really looking forward to meeting and chatting with you. So. So please do join those opportunities and enjoy the program today. Thank you both. That was that was really terrific. Um, okay, we we have a few minutes. I don't know, and I didn't ask our co-chairs, but I don't know if anybody has any questions. No? I like it. Yeah. You like the silence or you like the fact throw that I'm curve, it Throw a curveball. I like it. <laughs> throw a curveball. Nobody? 
All right, we need more engagement than that after this. Ellen, I'll, I'll kick us off with a question. Thank you. Um, I know. You know, thank you both as, for being co-chairs in this important conference and for the introductory remarks. I mean, you both come from you know, highly reputable corporations that you know, are household names. You know, what's the, you've covered this in your introductory remarks, but really what's the, the proposition of CPR that makes it worth you spending your, uh, your morning with us? You go, Cindy. Well, this is really my first experience with with an organization that um, that is so focused on a forward thinking approach to really um, identifying and addressing immediately relevant topics in dispute resolution and prevention. So, you know, I just find that very exciting. It's a really it's intellectually interesting. It's extremely relevant and important. And so, you know, that's what really drew me in. Uh, I. Uh... I would say that my interest was driven by the people who were involved. I was very interested in being uh, engaged with them professionally. That was probably the driver. And, and, but my, my thought process has evolved over time. As a corporate lawyer for over 20 years and, a, and then a, pri a litigator in private practice before that, they have a pretty good sense, as I'm sure most of you do, about how distracting and at times destructive um, le legal disputes can be for a company. And so my first, my first view was of that, which is I need to learn more about what is, what is the best thinking in that realm. Because I have to tell you, the people who run uh, American companies, whether they're relatively uh, small or relatively massive, they are really trying not to be distracted by a mountain of uh, litigation and other legal disputes over the course of a year. That was my, that was my window, was the people and then what is the best thinking? I will tell you that having been part of this organization um, over the last 18 years, my, my gaze has broadened. I, I'm looking more at the horizon of what I was referring to before, which is there's more about dispute resolution than just how does dispute resolution and the improvements affect American commerce. Although I'm very interested in its effect on American commerce, since I live and work in American commerce every day, like, like the rest of you. But there's more to it than that. There's, there is a, um, there, there's a way to help, um, how do I put it? Um, buttress the foundation of our society by finding ways where disputes, not the traditional kind, but how people can talk to each other more effectively, can have a significant impact more broadly. And I think at some basic level, it's how can we train people, whether it's people inside of a company, an HR person talking to a uh, an employee who has a complaint or two people on the street who can't see eye to eye on a topic. How can we train people to talk to each other and share views more effectively? There's a lot of that missing in our society. I, that's not a revolutionary thought of Bruce Bird's. I think we all know that. And so I think that broader mission is what really um, energizes my interest in the organization now. 